All right. Welcome back to another exciting, super fun, really cool episode of Villa Birds with your two course skating and robust hosts, Anika and Val, and Val and Anika. <laughs> Woo! Today, I am away. I'm out of town, so... Just rest assured to our listeners, Val and I are taking adequate time away from our apartments to enjoy the summer of love. And yet, and yet we're super committed and dedicated to the show that even when we are away, we're filming. Except for next Tuesday in which I will be fully away, not filming. (laughs) I mean, everybody's got to take time. We, we here at Villa Birds, we, ex- we expect and we respect the work-life balance here, you know? So, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But, oh man, with that though, we are at another week. It's so crazy. We're already at week three. Week two mm. ended at an awesome, exciting, super cliffhanger note. And we got our answers this week. I am giving the honors to you, Val, to recap us up with what we have missed and where we are going with today's episode. Okay, you got it. Well, at the top, let's just, let's just get out of the way that Nika and I manifest everything, everything, everything we've ever said on this podcast has manifested into reality and, you know, maybe it's us. Maybe it's the universe giving us our good karma for starting this podcast and being like, you know what? Now you're going to get one of the best seasons of Love Island. Maybe it's the producers finally getting their ish together and finally putting together storylines that are interesting. But regardless, we have manifested so much. And one of the things that I said last week was that I thought it would be interesting to see what would happen between Luca and Danica, if Danica were to pick Luca at the recoupling, and lo and behold, she picked him. And we're going to get into that. I don't want to get into too much specifics, but it didn't really go that well. (laughs) It did not go in Danica's favor, let's just say, okay? And we're going to get into the weeds. But following that, the next day, Danica and Luca are forced onto a date together which messy producers were messy for that one later on in the evening we have the break official breakdown of india and akenna's relationship and the official official kindling of dami and india starting to put two and two together and realizing it's always been them Amber walks in on an awkward silence between Ekin, Dami, and Jay, who are all talking about essentially her, which leads us to the top of day 13, where Amber and Dami have a very passive aggressive talk. Jay sprinkles the seeds of animosity between the girls, leading to an all-out brawl between the women of Love Island. Everybody goes to sleep. It's awkward. The next day, Ekin and Amber clear the air. Later, we have one of our infamous fit challenges. I mean, the producers clearly lied to us when they said that there would be no food challenges. Uh, we also meant we... It wasn't food, but we also meant we didn't want the spitting in the mouth, the drink challenges. But lo and behold, they brought those back. All right, whatever. Luca and Danica funnily do end up winning that challenge it's still no go for luca and then as we go into the evening we have a dumping that dumping ends with ikenna andrew jay as the bottom three boys and tasha ekinsu and amber as the bottom three girls and then boom we cut to credits leaving us to wait until the top of day 14 yes where we find out that Akena and Amber both go home. Again, we'll get into the weeds about that, but I do think a lot of people are happy with this dumping. Everyone is upset, 
But this does leave Dami and India to fully crack on in peace. The next day comes and we have some squares, some triangles going on. Jay wants to get to know Paige. Dami and India are still cracking on. Danica is trying to put it onto Davide, and it's not really working. And does Ekansu want to keep Davide on the back burner? More on that later. We have a truth or dare challenge, which leads to some saucy behavior, some saucy revelations. And we end the night with some Dami and India sexual chemistry. Except... That's not all, everybody, because we have a bombshell coming in tomorrow. Our first blonde bombshell of the season, Antigone. And that is what you missed on Glee. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was dying to hear about this recap, girl. <laughs> admittedly, admittedly, I just binge watched to catch up for today's episode. But... I technically shouldn't have because Val just described every single thing that happened so well that I am now double caught up with the happenings of week three already. So thank you for that. <laughs> of course, I do my best to keep it brief because we all know we're going to get into the weeds about the episode in just a minute, but so much has happened. I feel like every week we come back, every episode we come back and there's so much to bite into i almost regret making this just a two-day podcast because how are we supposed to dig into all of this juicy content but lo and behold we are going to regardless because this is what we're here to do but shout out to the producers for keeping it spicy this season well we can start with tasha and andrew who i still somehow deem the most irrelevant couple to their own detriment. I I tweeted this today while I was watching today's episode. Okay. And by today I mean Tuesday. They both talk to one another as if they're trying to convince the other that they like them. If that makes sense. I think Tasha talks like that. <laughs> There's a difference between reassurance and, you know, the way that they're kind of speaking about themselves. It's it's very strange for me to witness that. Maybe it's the way that they've been edited, but I just don't. They're not fun to watch. I'm trying to think of a couple that I really wasn't interested at first, but then actually really ended up loving. And the first couple that comes to mind like that is Millie and Liam. Like, I thought they were a little boring at first, but... You know, for the unseen bits and stuff, you would see how they would banter and, like, actually make fun of other people. And they had a personality there. It's just that the main episodes edited it out. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if the same thing is there for Andrew and Tasha. But I, we don't see them talk about anything. We don't see them, you know, talk about anything aside from, like, oh, you know what? Like, you're the one for me. Like, I'm set on you. Like, oh, I was hoping they weren't going to call you for the dumping. All this other stuff. And for me, it just seems a little artificial. Like, I... I understand reassurance, but when it's to that capacity, I kind of get the ick a little bit. Like, okay, like, why are you, are you convincing me or are you convincing yourself? Because those are two different things. I 100% agree with you. I, I do agree with you. I, and I have been watching Unseen Bits. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I don't think they have a lot of moments in Unseen, unseen Bits to kind of redeem their on-screen chemistry. Am I starting to come around to the idea that they do like each other? Yes. I think Tasha has finally settled down a little bit, and I think they can make it to Casa More without any more bumps. What's to happen in Casa More, or if they even make it to Casa More, that's still to be determined. But regardless of whether they're a stable couple or not whether they've finally gone into that point they're just not an interesting couple and not every couple has to be an interesting couple that's okay but it's not gonna win you love island and it shows 
Because they were both in the bottom. Yeah, I don't they know. Were. I don't know if on Tasha's end, the reason that she was in the bottom is because the public is convinced she doesn't like him that much. And so they wanted to see what would happen if they were to break up. But I know that also on Andrew's end, he's a very nice guy. He hasn't done anything wrong. He's just not interesting. And so we'll get into the dumping. I mean, we know that Andrew didn't end up going home, but I do almost, a part of me almost wishes that Andrew did go home because their relationship is just not doing anything for the show. They're never in the middle of drama. Whenever Bombshell comes in, it's kind of they entertain it for two seconds, or rather, Tasha entertains it for two seconds, and then she goes back and tries to convince us that she's into Andrew. Mm -hmm. Tasha's not as interesting when she's with Andrew, and that's okay, but maybe they just shouldn't be on the show. And so if Andrew had gone home, it would have been interesting to see whether would Tasha go home with him? If she really liked him, she would go home, in the famous words of Theo, season three. Or if she would stay and crack on with somebody else and go on to have a much more interesting, much more rewarding, literally rewarding in the sense of the 50K relationship with somebody else. Who's to say? But he's definitely... He's locked in. No, what I'm trying to say is he's locked in. Yeah. But I'm curious, like, okay, let's say Antigone's here. I think she's going to end up staying. I, I definitely think that some of the other girls are in trouble. Let's say another guy bombshell comes in, or better yet, Casa more. I will be very curious to see how Tasha acts because I, I'm not buying the commitment fit. We know she's got commis- commitment issues. There's definitely, like, the shoe's about to drop she's not gonna stay loyal to Andrew I would be shocked if she does but if she does go for her but I I don't know even even when he got saved and I tweeted this shameless plug at Villa Bird's pod because Val and I've been killing it on Twitter her face was so blank when she was telling Andrew I don't know what I would have done if you got sent home like I would have I think I would come home with you like there was no facial expression there was no warmth there was no concern like she her face was so blank that I was like would you have gone home with him like I don't know I agree with you yeah to her credit well maybe not to her credit I feel like she's almost lying to herself because Andrew is the best suited to her in that house so far and Mm -hmm. so when other bombshells have come in you know the other shoe hasn't dropped because they just haven't been the bombshell for her and so she gets excited she gets gets excited excited, but it never it never manifests because it's they're never suited to her the way that andrew is more suited to her yeah but we did see her get emotional at the fire pit I don't think, however, that that was her being emotional about Andrew leaving, but more so what that would mean, the decision and the commitment that that would mean for their relationship. That might have been very overwhelming for her because their true test is going to be when they're separated, whether that be because one of them is sent home and the other one isn't, which that didn't happen, or whether that be Casa Amor. I think at this point, she would be wrong if a male bombshell came in and her head turned. Yeah. But when they're separated, that's her true test. When she doesn't have to be faced with Andrew every day, I do think that that is going to be when she dips on him. And if it's not, if they're separated and they stick together, God bless them, but they're going to be out on a public vote unless they start telling some jokes. Anything. (laughs) Anything. I I agree with that. I was just going to say, if they make it through this week, which I think that they will, we might be wrong. We haven't been so far, but interesting stuff. Interesting dynamic, but very boring coupling. Yes. And I do have faith that Cosmo Moore 
has the power to tear them apart because this season has been so good so far. And the last two seasons, the guys they brought in for the girls at Casa Amor were weak. Yeah. Weaklings. They were. Complete weak links. Oh, my God. But since we're bringing in banger bombshells this year, we're bringing in bombshells that be bombshelling. I'm like, okay, we actually have shit to be worried about this year because do the guys heads turn every year? Absolutely. It doesn't matter the caliber of woman that walk through Casa Amor. The men's heads be swiveling all around. Mm-hmm. They're like all around, all up and down, wherever. 360. Yeah. But the women are very loyal. Yeah. So we need to bring in a heavy duty level of bombshells. And I do think I do think that they are going to deliver this year. Val is like, ladies, it is hot girl summer. We owe no man loyalty. If you're single, you get out there and you weigh out all your options. So yes. this is a PSA for all listeners who are still single. <laughs> Please, Val is encouraging you to explore all of your options, both in and out of the villa, before you decide to settle down for Cozy Ho Autumn, y'all. So Yes. Emphasis on if you are single, weigh all our, all of your options. Please. Yes. Please. I'm but if you, you But if you're not single, still, you can consider your options. Don't worry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's never too late to reconsider. All right, who's next? We have... Danica, Gemma, and Luca next. I saw a tweet, and again, I just keep plugging her Twitter. I saw a tweet where it was like, why is Danica more of an eggshell than a bombshell? (laughs) And I think that's so true. Like, she's got no personality. Like, she, she just has cute fits. She's gorgeous. She's very nice. Great dancer. But there's nothing there. She's not bombshelling. Like, she's not doing anything. She's not swiveling heads. She's not trying to graft with anybody. There was that instance with Jax that she was kind of, you know, feeling him a little bit, but nothing came out of it. Like, come on, girl. Yeah, I definitely think that she did end up making a mistake at the recoupling. It's what I wanted to see, but what happened after, I could not have expected. Um... Mm -mm. I did not expect Luca. I have so much to say about this boy. He drives me absolutely crazy. One minute I hate him, the next minute I love him. I just want to wring his neck, I think. And yeah, he's nah, beautiful. nah, nah, nah. If a man is about me, he's going to act the way that Luca did when he got chosen by Danica. Okay, girl. I was so here for that. No, no, no. I have to say. <laughs> he could have been nice. And he redeems like himself. Him. When he goes on the date with her, he does finally come around and is like, I'm sorry for the way I acted. It wasn't appropriate. But the entire night and the day leading up to it, just the way he was throwing a tantrum. One thing about Luca, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. If something yeah. happens that he doesn't like, oh my god, are you gonna know about it? He's just sitting there huffing and puffing. And then you, the thing that pisses me off the most is you then go to confront him. Danica's like, yeah, I picked you. Like, let's see how it goes. He's like, "Mm, no, like, no, no. Why are you upset? No, it's fine. Like, he'll just, I hate to use this word, but truly no other comes to mind. He'll gaslight you into being like, no, I'm not upset. Why would you think I'm upset? I'm not upset that you picked me. It's like, babe, you literally went to kiss Gemma in front of me and then sat there huffing and puffing. You're upset. Just say you're upset. You want to be big and bad so bad. And then when it comes down to it in the confrontation, you don't want to be the emotional one. You're the emotional one. That's fine, but you're the emotional one. And that also is brought up in the truth or dare slash question challenge Mm -hmm. that they have on night 14 where I can sue calls out Luca for being like yeah you're kind of all about Gemma and you're a little jealous and he's like me I'm not it's like just be self-aware and he always comes around he always admits that he's wrong but bad behavior can get away only so like it, I can only excuse it so much you know what I'm saying 
I thought when Danica called him needy, that was the funniest thing. Yes, it's, needy. It's true. Needy. That's what it's I meant. True. It, it is true. He is needy. And he took that and was so butthurt. It's like, please, please, you're butthurt. And I uh, think the, um, you're absolutely right. Like during the recoupling, he was super, super rude. I thought it was great for entertainment value. As a viewer, yeah. I was like, oh my God. But as somebody who was there, like if I was Danica, I, I would feel so upset at that. That was so uncalled for. And then towards the end, I don't know if you caught, but he was like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, can I, can I catch a break or something like that? And I was just like, come yeah. on, man. Like, she's gorgeous. She's so nice. You should be flattered that you got chosen in that capacity. It was so weird to see a grown ass man, com- like, just, you're right, throw a tantrum. It was weird. But what I will say, though, is I do like the fact that he is able to acknowledge his behavior once he's had time to cool down and actively, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. pursue discussing in a way where he's not then gaslighting gatekeep girl bossing anymore. Like he actually Mm -hmm. acknowledged his behavior and moved on. Uh, We, we've talked about this on the show, how whenever a man gets mad, he turns into a little boy in a little bit. (laughs) So I definitely think that element is there, but yeah, I just thought it was really interesting to see how he blew her off completely like didn't even get to know her in a way where they could have been friends and I think destroying an opportunity like that even if you're already pursuing somebody else can be a little dangerous in a game like this essentially Mm -hmm. because you never know like I said before it's not just about the coupling it's about the friendships you make as well like Remember when Amber saved Anton because they were friends and she loved his personality? Like, that could have happened with Danica and Luca, but now we know that Danica would definitely not choose Luca with the way that he treated her initially. So, you know, people forgive, but they never forget. So, unfortunately, it sucks that their coupling didn't really work out. It's fun that they got to redeem themselves during the lip challenge, which, by the way, I loved. (laughs) It was so funny to see. Sorry, just quick side note. There were some couples there who had such funny reactions oh my god I know the others spitting into their mouths is the funniest (laughs) thing like oh man but yeah pretty pretty irrelevant slash least problematic birdhouse because same thing with Gemma and Davide like nothing really is going on they're still in a friendship couple it's nice that they could go back to that so the fact that their relationship was good enough that Gemma decided to save Davide I thought was sweet yeah but also I think it's just because she wouldn't want to share a bed with anybody else yeah so yeah nothing too much I still love oh my god Gemma wearing the fish flops goodbye that was the sweetest thing like they're definitely yeah. her and Luca are, are pretty strong which I think is cute and I'm looking forward to them recoupling up soon I am as well I definitely think she's sloppy for him I saw some people mm-hmm. on Twitter being like she doesn't like him she doesn't even give him an give him an inch I'm like no that's exactly how I am in a relationship that I'm very I have a tough exterior and I don't like to show my emotions I don't like to cry I don't like to be like have genuine quote genuine moments like there's a reason Anika is the one who says all the flattering things about us like I that makes me cringe absolutely makes me cringe like bleh, not for me but to see everybody say that Gemma doesn't like Luca when it's clear she does. She's just the soppy the soppiness inside her for him makes her cringe, so she acts that way. But she definitely likes him. Come on. Who are we? Kidding? You guys, nobody is gonna wear fish flops unless it's for a man that they are down for and down bad for you know how much it would take me to like somebody to wear something as tacky like that's like wearing pajama jeans or Mm. like something else that's just so out of my (laughs) I don't know like this is first like I was like as seen on tv thing that I could think of aside from fish flops but yeah like I have to be down bad for you in order to wear that kind of stuff it does not make sense for me at all so yeah no Gemma definitely likes Luca we all know that Luca feels crazy in love with this 19 year old but you know what good for them well I have some additional things to say about Luca that I did pick up this last few run of episodes and I do kind of think that we have a super fan on our hands with Luca 
let me explain okay i was gonna i was gonna say the thing that you noticed was that the tanner that he gets the whiter his teeth do did you um, notice that i mean obviously who doesn't <laughs> notice that? <laughs> that is apparent <laughs> But, that was the only thing I had to say. Yeah, I do have to say I think that Luca has super fandom and uh, game playing in his system, okay? Because obviously we saw the way he reacted when Danica picked him. He was huffing and puffing, and it was very reminiscent to when Georgia in season three picked Kem knowing that him and Amber were basically girlfriend and boyfriend. And they reacted the same way. He went to Amber and kissed her in front of everybody and then went back to his seat and was, like, all upset. Obviously, we saw Luca do the same thing with Gemma, except that they're not as far into their relationship as Kim and Amber were. Another thing I noticed was he said to Dami once Amber left in the dumping, oh, well, if you really liked her, you would have gone home. Which, again, is another reference to a season three moment. And lastly, I do think I had one last reference. Mm -hmm. He put himself in the doghouse. I seriously don't think there's any reason for him to be in the doghouse. And he's kind of waiting for Gemma to finally join him there so that they can be the couple that has been, like, torn apart and they've been sleeping Mm -hmm outside in the doghouse and when are they gonna finally pair up i just think that he thinks in his mind that they are jack and danny and they're just not are they sweet (laughs) yes but they're just not jack and danny at all so i'm a little worried for Gemma because obviously with the age gap and the little gameplay that i'm picking up i'm like "Mm, i don't know if He's as good of a guy as he's trying to play. Last episode, we were, you and I were like giggling and chuckling about how the fact that Gemma and Luca are like little shits. And I feel like this comes into play when we're talking about Luca's behavior the past week. I definitely just think that he is still a little emotionally immature and falls fast and falls hard. Mm -hmm. If I recall correctly, he told Danica that Gemma has got him feeling a type of way that he hasn't felt in years. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then maybe this is a high that he hasn't felt in a while. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows that when you fall in love, you get a little crazy. So for me, I haven't seen enough yeah, I just haven't seen enough of him to judge or even think about it in a game player way. I just see somebody who's a bit of a rascal, to be yeah. honest, just like me. Like a lot of the comments that he said, a lot of the things that he kind of says to instigate people, it's definitely things that I've thought about or said things that I've said. And it's just, it's just all in good fun. But Absolutely. I would say he deserves it. He's a liar, an actress. <laughs> Get the fuck out. I definitely don't see him winning. Like, I see him winning an Oscar for this performance if what you're saying is true. And now I'm scared because, you guys, everything that Val has hypothesized so far has come true. So now I'm just kind of waiting for the shoe to drop because now that you've brought this up, now that she's said this, spoken this into the existence, even though she and I are, like, what is it, like 200 miles away? Like, I definitely (laughs) feel the energy coming over here right now, and I definitely think it might come true. So we don't know. But yeah, it's just too coincidental the way he keeps referencing season three. I'm like, oh my god, like I get it. Either you're really excited to be here or you're really taking after those who came before you. People don't just apply to Love Island just to apply to it, right? Like you've mm-hmm. watched it, you know the premise of the show, you get it. That's why for me, maybe, you know coincidentally reenacting something that's happened in a previous season doesn't seem so ridiculously out of like context for me like that kind of makes sense also if you really do like somebody which I think he does and we see that he is a little emotionally immature I could see why he would act that way and he's kept this character since the start of time like he's been super like territorial protective like he's been super you know Mm -hmm. um about whoever he's about 
So honestly, I'm kind of curious to see how, if Antigone is going to get to him a little bit. It's I know he's into brunettes. It's going to be interesting but, to see. But I'm, I'm curious. And those are, that's the last of my thoughts on Birdhouse number three. Yeah, enough Which on is them. the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two. Who are you putting up to bat? Well, I want to save our favorite Indian Dami for, for last because okay. I just have so much screaming to do. I know. But <laughs> <laughs> I guess we can get into the mess that is. Yeah, let's do it. Jay and Ekansu and mm-hmm. Paige and Jax. Yep. Um, take it away, because I All again right. have so much to say. So, I'm going to start with the least messy out mm. of that mess, Paige and Jax. Okay. They, they spent a night together in the hideaway. They have solidified whatever, you know, tension that they've had going on. Clearly cannot keep their hands off of each other. We've got a Courtney Kardashian, Travis Barker situation here. They've been pretty good, pretty steady. We haven't seen a lot of them as much as I would want to see them, but we've seen Mm. enough to know that they're, you know, they're having fun together. It's a nice, like, kind of summer fling type situation. I don't know if it's love or not, but they're definitely strong, and the hideaway kind of enforced that with whatever they were doing with that strawberry lube or whatever. The way we saw her bear back, I was like... The lunch yeah. they came off and sex is oh. happening. I don't care oh. what they say when they get out of there. They had sex. Come on. I'm in my mama's house right now. I can't say anything, but yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're good to go. I'm really kind of surprised after Danica talked to Jax. He was like, you know, my head could turn, but I actually do like Paige. And he didn't say that in so many words, but you can see that he does feel quite passionate about her, cares about her, and I really like their dynamic together. So they're definitely the less messy. The reason why we put them in this birdhouse with Ekansu and Jay is because of the fact that Jay all of a sudden is now back on his Excel sheet brain mode to try to figure out (laughs) his backups just in case Ekansu decides to do a little 180 situation, get back with Davide, which obviously is never going to happen, but... Well, never say never, but I don't think it's going to happen. But yeah, so Paige essentially got brought up because Jay and Gemma were talking and Jay wanted her to guess which of the other Islanders would probably be into him. And honestly, the fact that he's like asking Gemma, I thought was really weird. I was like, are you guys friends like that? Like it was kind of weird. But the fact that Paige is now in the mix, they had that little spicy truth or dare game. And Jay kissed Paige. He wants her as a back burner and he wants her to know that if she has her arms open for him, he will run right in. So we were talking about how calculating this man is and now we're actually seeing it this week is that, oh shit, yeah, like he's definitely in here for not love. Like Ekin Sue, I think definitely is vibing with him more than he is the other way around. And mm-hmm. my girl, she better wake up for Casa more because I will not watch her get done dirty on the TV like this. <laughs> Hundred percent. That's those are my two cents about that. Yeah, let me just backtrack a little bit because Mm -hmm. I do, Mm -hmm. I do not like Jax. I don't trust him for a second. I I'm clocking him right now. That man is gonna break Paige's heart. I mean, do we see funny sides of him? Yes, he's kind of the guy that I would put up with in a male friend group. Maybe in my boyfriends my hypothetical boyfriends friends friend group you know what I'm saying where it's like I don't Mm want to see that man we have nothing in common he's a lad's lad but here and there he makes me laugh he says something because he can't he can't hold back he just kind of says what's on his mind he likes to say the the little rapscallion thing it is that yeah. he has to say he loves to say it he loves to tease the islanders and make them uncomfortable i mean he teased luca and danico and they accidentally both wore light blue on their day he teases amber but not about not liking dami so he's definitely a little shit who will make you laugh but that being said i don't trust him i just I'm seeing him being physical with Paige, and so I definitely do think it's a good thing that he is physically into her. 
we've seen a lot of Love Island couples where the guy's phoning in and, and he's like, I swear I like you, I swear I like you, I swear I like you. And yet they never touch the girl that they're with. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. they go and they meet a new bombshell and they're like all over her. I think Paige has a leg up in that he is physically super attracted to her. But just something, there's something missing. And I have to remind Paige of what she said herself, that she falls hard and fast. We saw her act this way when her and Luca were like three days in and he his head was like up in the clouds. He couldn't make up his mind. And now we're seeing her act this way with Jax. And I'm like, babe, if what you want is a little holiday romance, then I'm all here for it. But we're on Love Island and you're, you're a contestant with so much potential. I do see if he's not going to be good to her, then I need him to fake it until Casa more so she can have her broken heart, her broken girl, no, her broken hearted girl redemption arc when he 100% comes back with somebody else. Because I'm telling you now, if his head doesn't turn from the bombshell, he's coming back with Casa more with somebody else, 100%. So that's my thoughts on them. And then I turn to her only other option in the house, Jay. Again. (laughs) With the game playing. There's two different kinds of game playing I like. There's faking that your relationship has more romance than it does so that you're the cute couple. And then there's the moving crazy to get the most camera time possible. I prefer the moving crazy because at least we all acknowledge that you're being absolutely crazy, okay? I think that Jay went for Ike and Sue because Ike and Sue was down for the dramatics and then he saw the drama happen and he was like, all right, I don't like that because he wants the drama, but then once that's over, once the camera time and the falling in love and the recoupling happens, it's like, okay, now we have to be a couple that people like so that they vote us highly. And that's right. what he's not getting with Ek and Sue. I think what he doesn't realize is that the time that the voting came around was not appropriate. If they had had a little more camera time after, they might not have been voted so low. But it didn't matter to him because they were already voted low. And then he starts sprinkling the seeds of animosity with the girls. And he tells Ekansu, oh, are you good with the girls? It seems like there's some tension. Boom, all of a sudden, Amber and Ekansu are fighting. And boom, all of a sudden, Jay is like, "Mm, I like a girl with a good reputation, who's chill vibes. It's like, yeah, well, you kind of started that drama. Like, I see you, girl. You started that tea. But okay. And now they're in the bottom. And Deck and Sue's like, oh my god, I would have been so sad if you left. And he was like, oh my god, me too. And she's like, oh my god, would you have left? And he's like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's uh, give it a few That's days. the reason why I'm saying, like, she's, d- like, we know that Jay's just a calculating little mean girl. We mm-hmm. know that he's not there for the right reasons. And if yeah. us two, if two American broads can see this from across right. the pond i'm sure the uk public can see this and that's why exactly. he was voted so low i can soon needs to get on her hot girl shit when or before she gets into casa more because i'm not here to watch her get done dirty like this by somebody like jay like are you kidding right and the fact that jay and davide are like so close too is like killing me it's the funniest thing it's so funny it's hilarious yeah and it makes it tricky because i don't want i actually don't want ek and sue to be the star of casa more in the same way that like moro wasn't really the star of casa more even though she was the bombshell Mm -hmm. she brought the drama we're gonna have enough going on with these quote stable couples that i would prefer if ek and sue fell to the background and was just like did her ek and sue shit you know And I think him trying to stick it onto Paige right now is going to cause that to happen. I don't think Ekansu is going to be down for that. I think Paige is going to shut it down as well because she's heads in the clouds, thinks her and Jax are great. She's shutting it down with anybody else. And, you know, I don't want Paige in a couple with Jay. I don't. No. 
So same. I think maybe once the bombshell comes in, she's either gonna go for Davide or she's gonna go for Jay, or maybe she'll go for Shock Jax. But hopefully we see the reckoning of Jay's game playing in that Ekansu will find out. And I also have to say, I don't I'm not buying this storyline that the Islanders are like inventing that Ekansu still has the hots for Davide. I feel like every time we've seen her and Davide talk, it's been very platonic. And I think No, like Davide's like, you're you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Davide's done. Like, Goodbye. Of course. On Davide, Davide's part, it's 100% like platonic. And that even on Ekansu's end, it seems 100% platonic. Like they're just chatting and it's whatever. And yet Jay is kind of using that to be like, oh, well, you know, if Ekansu's going to move to Davide, it's like, no, babe, you don't want to be with Ekansu because you guys as a couple are not going to win the 50K. All right, so that's that about our second birdhouse then. So quite a hot mess in the fact that everybody's hot, but they're all a mess. <laughs> so. That's the perfect way to put it. <laughs> but you know what? Upwards and onwards. And our last birdhouse is the one that I'm most excited to talk about. Although I will say I'm sad that Kenna left. I think that he had a lot of potential. I, I missed Akenna. I think that was uncalled for. I would have rather seen Jay go home than Akenna. But had Akenna not gone home, I don't think we would have seen the beauty that is Dami and India together. And I am here for it. Just give them the 50K now. So wholesome. So cute. I think these are our winners. If they can keep it together mm-hmm. until the end, ladies and gentlemen, we have our winners. Okay, them in oh that truth or dare God. game, the tension, the kissing, the chemistry, the fact that all of the other islanders were hooting and hollering and so excited as us, they gotta, they gotta get to the finals. Yes, they have to, they have to, they have to, they have to. And, you know, usually when the couples are kissing like that in the middle of the challenge, I'm like cringing, I'm like, yo, like, did you forget that there's like, 10 other people around you like disgusting and I look away but them I was like I was like yeah I was like I was like hello I'm not blinking hello (laughs) um oh my god this is no it's everything I've wanted and more and I have to say when we talk about a slow burn when we talk about friends to lovers this is what we're Mm -hmm. talking about not the mess that Akenna was giving us. But, you know, we were surviving off of crumbs, okay? And as much as I like him and as much as I was trying to root for him because I do think he had a lot of potential, it just, it wasn't giving. And no, it you can't force something. They were never giving friends to lovers. And Dami in India, <laughs> that's friends to lovers. That's how you do that. You go from, oh, we're joking one minute to like, oh my God, like, yeah, every time I am with him, I do get really smiley and we do have so much to talk about and it's effortless with us. When when we talk Love Island couples that are iconic, what they have is a level of effortlessness that is not replicable by anybody else in the house. And this is what they have. They have something that nobody else in this villa has right now. It's easy between them. It flows. They have sexual tension, but they're also friends. It's like, come on. Yes, give it to me. Serve it to me on a plate. And I honestly, I'm not even being like, I'm not exaggerating right now when I say that I think they might be my favorite Love Island couple of all time. And we've only gotten one day of them. The dynamic is ideal. And by yes. ideal, I mean just to such a high standard of what, when I think of Love Island and people connecting and getting to the end, that's what I think of when I see them. That wholesomeness, the connection, the evolution of said connection is something that's really vital 
for you to then start rooting for said couple to, you know, make it through the trials and tribulations that is Love Island and get them to the final. One thing I will say before I continue (laughs) completely just on this love train for India and Dami is that Dami has piercings in his nostrils and India has a septum piercing. So if you put their nose together, like all their their noses are pierced like all around. So hot. They're both (laughs) so fucking hot. It's unreal. I'm... I don't know why, but the fact that he has a nipple piercing is like the funniest thing. I can't get over it. Every time I see it on the screen, I'm like, oh... (laughs) Okay, it's the funniest <laughs> thing. I just wouldn't expect him to have one. That to me, I can't talk about that because I'm really sensitive about nipples. And I literally like if you if you talk about a nipple being pierced, I will black out. Like it's honestly, I guess a phobia of mine Ugh, for me. I mean, he but has one. I'm, he has know, one, and it's very apparent. And it's, I just, uh, you know, the just concept saying. of him having it is so high. The I actual just, reality of it for me thing. is a phobia and it's a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, that's fair. I'll leave it alone then, you guys. But everybody, flutter DMs with your nipple piercings and we no. will rate them okay. next episode. <laughs> okay, but yeah, no. Dami, <laughs> Dami in India. Love it. Here for it. Can't wait for them to progress. I can't wait for them to compete in challenges together. I can't wait for them to just talk more. I want them to go on their first date after they officially become recoupled. I think it'd be a really fun experience for us all to see how they're going to unfold over the next, or I guess the remaining weeks that are to come. I definitely think that they both have a very loyal value that they both respect about one another and respect about themselves and so I don't see them deviating away from each other if and when Casa More comes mm-hmm. but who's to say that they won't I don't know yeah. India's India's getting a bit of a bit of a taste for the good life with Dami and I don't want any other bombshell or girl to come and mess that up but I think Dami is going to get what he's looking for from India. I feel like they're both very similar in their way of giving and receiving love and attention. And I think it's really going to work out well for them. But I will say I'm a little relieved that Dami doesn't have to deal with Amber anymore. You could see that she was really kind of stressing him out and to yeah. the point where he wasn't himself for a few last few days when she was really trying to, you know, pick at um, nothing essentially mm-hmm. and make him feel bad over it. So, um, I don't yeah. know. I wish her the and best. She wasn't she wasn't the worst islander. I I no. liked her to an extent. It's just that she didn't bring anything like significantly dramatic or any sort mm-hmm. of crazy presence to the villa or or none that we saw anyway, but it was sad to see her go uh and Akena go, but yeah, I mean, in an ideal world, I do <laughs> I would love if every islander got to stay, but that's not the reality with Love Island and you know, I don't want her to be flooded with hateful comments I'm sure she's gonna get yeah. those purely because of how her and Dami fizzled out and I yeah. don't think that those are warranted I do wish she conducted herself better and was more honest about not liking him but at the end mm-hmm. of the day it's fine that things don't work out and she doesn't deserve any of the hate and she wasn't a bad girl but unfortunately it was the perfect time for her to go because I don't think it would have been as easy for India to crack on with Dami if one of her best friends was still in the house. Um, so yeah, it's just absolutely. the way the cookie crumbles. And I just have to add more praise to the list of praise we've given Dami in India. But something I noticed, obviously we got the hideaway in tonight's episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I didn't... I guess I had known this, but I didn't really realize that only official couples are allowed to go into the hideaway. And if you're not an official couple, then you can't go into the hideaway. And right now we have a few couples in limbo that aren't official and can't go into the hideaway. But it was very interesting that Dami and India have been an official item for less than 24 hours and people were already like nominating throwing in their name for the hideaway like obviously couldn't be 
Tasha and Andrew because they already got their turn and this is democracy apparently. <laughs> yeah. People threw Luca and Gemma, kind of. And nobody even thought about a consuming Jay or Paige and Jax until they realized that they were the only official couple. So I just think it's interesting that everyone in the villa sees that Dami and India have more chemistry in their pinky than every other couple has combined. Girl, if we were sitting there at the fire pit watching them play this truth or dare game, that's what we would be doing as well. They all saw yeah. it. Everybody was like, whoo. Yeah. Like you saw, what? when was it? I think it was when India and Dami kissed like Tasha, Tasha's reaction to that. Like that was all of us yes. watching that. Yes, she was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and that would have been yeah, me too. I would so, like, oh my God, you know oh my what? God. I can't wait for them to actually get that opportunity, but yes, favorite couple, best dynamic. That's like the ideal dream way to, I guess, fall for somebody and and get to know somebody that you're actually friends with and you have similar love languages and can actually have a decent conversation and then enjoy yourself. When Dami was like asking India about whether or not she had ever fallen in love, and then he's like, "Do you want to fall in love?" I was like, "Oh my goodness gracious!" Like, I know. yes, I do, Dami. <laughs> I live. He, in he the, wasn't asking I live me, in the but <laughs> <laughs> or was he? No. no. Yeah, and something else that's just amazing about Dami, I have faith that they will get through Casa more together and then they'll be even more the powerhouse couple that they already are but the reason I say that is because we saw in the last two two weeks that he was loyal to Amber and really saw that through to its end and he did not stray for really even a moment nope. until he was like okay things are fizzling out and you know it's time to look at other prospects. But outside of that, he was very loyal. And he seems like he's the kind of guy who gives himself 100% to one situation. And only once that one situation has run its course, then he'll dip and look at something else. So I do think that, um, um, you know, unless the bombshell that comes in is like his type, I really don't mm -hmm. see him swaying. It doesn't seem like Danica's even a thought in his mind at all so I do have reason to believe that he's going to be faithful to our India and we have our winners on our hands like come on come through yeah we love a loyal microbiologist ladies <laughs> right the best. that's so beautiful and hot and sexy like a microbiologist hello <laughs> he yeah. got money He's scientific. Okay. <laughs> Anika, not everybody cares about money, okay? I just think that he's very well-rounded and interesting, okay? <laughs> uh, okay, let's cut to the part where you're like, oh, I, I would want my man to spend $1,000 on me <laughs> on a date. Like, okay, girl. Would it be nice? <laughs> yes, I've said this, but it's not important to me. I'm a humble girl. <laughs> Nah, show me your W-2. <laughs> then we'll talk. I left me to any any sort of man that wants to try to entertain me with, with anything, but I beg to differ. <laughs> Cut me out coughing on my water and dying because of you saying that. I promise I don't have COVID anymore, but that is killing me. Oh, my God. Well, that was our top birdhouse. Best couple, best dynamic. All right, I was going to say Antigone is a singer-songwriter, so she might be at the talent show. Oh, God. Okay. Great. <laughs> she's going to show up with a guitar, and she's going to sing to the boys. Cool. That's what I want. So. Yeah, a singer-songwriter. Okay. I mean, if Millie can play the piano. Yeah, but that was a hashtag Antigone. joke. <laughs> I, I don't want a real person I'm a singer songwriter granted you know Paige from Pages and Finn was a serious singer and whatever but it wasn't like a thing so maybe she won't make it a thing um, but I'm always skeptical 
when singers and songwriters and models go onto the show because I'm like, okay, everybody here wants the same thing, but you really want that Love Island clout. You really do. So yeah. I'm always skeptical of them coming in. But I was wrong about Paige. She was babes from day one. I love her. Yeah. Well Even if I can one. never understand her. <laughs> yeah. This is true, too. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, let's see how the rest of this week goes. And our dear friends and fans and followers, we will be back in your ears on Saturday. But, Val... Do you want us to talk a little bit more about our socials real quick? Yes. Guys. I feel like I always lead it in like this, but like, guys. You would be doing this podcast a grand disservice if you didn't also follow us on Instagram at Villa Birds, on TikTok at Villa Birds, and on Twitter at Villa Birds Pod, okay? And the reason you would be doing us a disservice is one, if anything major happens and we need to update y'all, where are we gonna be? We're not gonna be on this podcast. You're not gonna get an update on this podcast about where we are, what we're doing, what we're thinking on the spot on this podcast, okay? Because we're only here Wednesday and Saturday mornings. So when we're not in your ear, we're on your feeds, okay? And we're giving you the tea. We're live tweeting as much as possible. We're giving you recaps on Twitter. We're dropping thoughts and opinions. We're dropping memes. And we're giving you little life updates, okay? You know? For example, next Tuesday, we may not be here. I will be on vacation, but you know where you're going to hear it? You're going to hear it on the social media, okay? Okay. So follow us those places please and thank you and then also we're on so many platforms okay i'm gonna try to name them all and then anika might be like well, actually we're on this one too okay so that might happen please bear with me but let me just say we're on spotify we're on apple pods okay we're on iheart radio radio we're on stitcher we're on apple no we're on amazon music is there anything else we're on anika you can find us on Red Circle. Okay, well, yeah, the Red Circle. Uh, that's our home page. Our that's home our home base, page. Home, okay. home podcast, where you can find us, where it all started, where we're branching out from now. Yeah. And but if you're a cool kid, you can find us all in all the other places, okay? And on top of that, you can leave us a rating, and you can leave us a cute little review, and maybe if you do those things, We'll read them and we'll be super grateful. And yeah, how better to express your love for this podcast than to leave us a little love note on the reviews page, okay? So do all of the things I just told you to do, okay? Thank you. <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>